Patchen and Taurus has created a new show with Tony Randall. And they put me on now as story editor, um, which, was a, which was a great break. Uh, obviously, a step up in position, but also that I got to work with Tony. And Tony was an extraordinary guy, talent. And with, beyond all that bluster, whatever you remember of him on The Tonight Show, just a pussycat, just the sweetest guy. I mean, he was just amazing. I love him. Um, what happened was Tom and Jay didn't get along with Tony. Uh, with first year, we had a 27 share. Uh, they also would never speak to Fred Silverman, right? So Fred Silverman was then the biggest man at television. He would call and they would say, uh, well, we're playing foosball. We can't talk to him now, you know? <laughs> it was like, then sometimes they would take the phone and put it over the foosball game, you know? So I don't know what they were thinking. I'm thinking, that can't be good. There's only three networks, you know? He's the biggest guy. And uh, what happened was I was, always, I, I couldn't believe you could make a living doing this. That was this, that was the one thing I just thought, this is not possible. It is so much fun. I was trying to remember things to come home to tell Diana. It, how can I make a living? I mean, I'm going to work in shorts. I play tennis at lunch. I play softball on the MTM team on the weekend. This, this is madness. Someone's gonna come in and go, wait a minute, come on, get out of here, you can't. I've done, I had done terrible jobs for no money, you know? And here, we're, you know, we're being paid okay already and uh, just by guild minimums and uh, so they, because I was willing to do, so any terrible job that would come up, they would give it to me. I would do it. Because they, they called me John Boy, because I was so earnest and eager. So they always go, let John Boy do it. This is a shit job. I've got to give it to John Boy. And I, I was so happy to do it, just so happy to do it. So they said to me one time, why don't you call Fred Silverman John Boy? You like him so much. I go, he's not going to talk to me, you know. He goes, he's not going to talk to you. We're not talking to him, you know. So at the end of the year, we're canceled with 27 share. As Jay Tarsa said of Fred Silverman, a very small man. So he's, they've abused him for a whole year. Now they're surprised that he's canceled us. But Grant, in a brilliant stroke, gets the show picked up on CBS for the second season. Bob Daly was the head of CBS at the time. And um, Tony's fine. He has one condition. He doesn't, work with Tom, he doesn't want to work with Tom and Jay anymore. And uh, that's fine with them. They don't want to work with him anyway. They get paid no matter what. So who is absolutely without power, without prestige, without anything, who we can now move up and all of us control me, you know. And I had a, a, a cohort at that time, Hugh Wilson, who went on to do Police Academy, WKRP in Cincinnati. It was our first job. We weren't partners, but we were colleagues there, you know. So because we are the lowest people probably in show business, we now get moved up and we're producing the Tony Randall Show. Because everyone thinks they're just going to do whatever they want, and we're going to be the we're going to be the Nouriel Maliki of, uh, of of producing. You know, they're just going to tell us what to do. And but Hugh and I were not stupid. Or maybe we were, but we were smart in this one area, which is, okay, you can call us whatever you want, say whatever you want, pay us whatever you want. No one else can come on the set. It's either our show, again, just trying to protect the process. You know, and it's just our show, or we won't do it. Um, I don't care any about the outside trappings of it, but I'm not going to do a show where then someone else can say, here's what you got to do. It's either our show or it's not our show. And everybody went along with it, you know. And we went to Tony and we said, look, Tony, we're no, we have no business producing the show, really. We know who you are. You're Tony Randall. We know who we are. You know, I, he was running a plant store in Gardena last year. You know, we're, we're here, but this is it. You, we're all you have. But if you give us your trust, your, we'll kill ourselves for you, you know? And, and, you'll, and Tony, his eyes welled up, you know? He just said, boys, he always called us boys. He goes, boys, we're in this together. And he never, he never went against that. He, uh, he was a riot, Tony. I mean, he was no, well, I'm not saying he was a picnic, you know? But in public, in the public sphere, he would never go against us. He would always say, ah, and then they would, well, and the director would say, well, that's what the boys want. He goes, well, if that's what the boys want, I'm overruled, you know? But then he would come back, and he was great, Tony, because the name of the show, of course, was The Tony Randall Show. And we had to be arguing different discussions. He goes, wait, he goes, wait, I, I, what's the name of this show? He goes, oh, look, it's The Tony Randall Show. He goes, surely I should have something to say, you know? He would show you, it's The Tony Randall Show, you know? Um, and he played a character, Judge Walter Franklin. And his other great line, which Tony was, he goes, no, no, I have no problem with that, boys. No, we'll do that. He goes, I have one question for you, though. Who's playing Judge Franklin Friday night? Because I'm not. 
<laughs> you know, so 20 was perhaps we call passive aggressive, but uh, at the bottom of it, he was just a doll. You know what I mean? And, and actually, most of the time he was right. We had one senior member that was, uh, I, I thought it really worked, and Tony wanted to change, and we said, Tony, but it really, it worked. And he said, I can make anything work. That's not the point. He goes, we can do better. And <laughs> so this is what we were dealing with, but just the sweetest guy, you know, where he's always just hugging, and after every time there's a fight, they would send us stuff, you know, but he was great. And every uh, Saturday morning, you know, actually we used to shoot the show on Tuesday night, and uh, so Friday night, Hugh and I would do one last pass just so we could say to Tony, in our own hearts and minds, look, you have everything. Whatever the limitations of our talent, you have everything we have this week. And Tony would call every Saturday morning. I could hear the opera playing in the background, and he would say one of two things. Boys, you did it. His other thing would be, boys, I'll save you. <laughs> you know, so, um, and then here's the other great thing about Tony Randall. There were so many, but he, um, he never turned on us. The ratings weren't good. We were following the Jeffersons. I said, defied CBS, show us the DNA of one person who sits down to watch both shows, who says, honey, quick, it's the Tony Randall show and then the Jeffersons. No, it was the worst match ever, you know. Uh, but he said, I like, what it, I like the material, boys, and that's really all that matters to me. And his, his friend, uh, Klugman, was having a huge success uh, with Quincy at the time, so it was really a rivalry, friendly rivalry, but still, Tony never turned. And we were canceled, and at the final party, he said to me, uh, I have one regret. And I said, what's that, Tony? He said, I wish I could buy stock in your future. So I was lucky. I just, always, I just was around those guys, you know, uh, 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 to have worked with Tony Randall. I mean, you know, that's a connection back to uh, Aeschylus. I mean, it's, it's real, this connection. And, and Tony's thing was, the audience, the audience, you have, the audience matters. They're owed a performance. They're owed an evening. You know, it was not casual.